Force will be with you. Always. Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker introduced some new Force powers, and hey, director J.J. Abrams did tease that they might be divisive. So what are they? Let's break them down. Needless to say, spoilers ahead. While seen in many Star Wars Legends materials, Force healing has never been canon in the Star Wars world. Until now. Force healing is the ability to use the Force to heal an injury, and that range is wide. We see Force healing used in The Rise of Skywalker not once, not twice, but three times. Rey uses it early on in the movie to heal an injured Sand Serpent. The second time happens when Rey impales Kylo Ren with his lightsaber during their fight atop the wreckage of the second Death Star, then heals him, much to his and our surprise. Finally, we see the extreme extent of this ability, to heal or even revive others from fatal injuries, and the injury doesn't even have to be physical. When it seems as though Rey has used all of her strength in the fight against Palpatine and simply dies following his destruction, Ben is able to repair that metaphysical wound by bringing her back to life, even if it means sacrificing his own in return. This is a pretty major concept to introduce into the Skywalker saga, but Disney has laid the breadcrumbs for it in The Mandalorian. Little baby Yoda, sorry, the child, first attempted to force heal Mando, though he picked the little cutie up and put him back in his buggy before we could see it. Later, Baby Yoda gets to use his power to save Grief Karga after he was struck by a poisonous dragon. Yes, space dragons, I know, that's for another time. But anyway, these canon appearances confirm that this power is accessible to all Force users if they try hard enough. These next powers technically fall under the Force Bond umbrella, or Force Dyad as they call it in the movie, but regardless, we're going to give them fun names to differentiate them. In The Last Jedi, Kylo got water on his hand after a Force phone call with Rey while she was on Acto. The Rise of Skywalker expanded on this idea, showing that Force users can actively transfer or grab items from the other Force user. Again, we're not sure if this is Force Bond specific, but it kind of has to be, right? From his ship, Kylo is able to psychically communicate with Rey, who is on Pasana, and rips a beaded necklace off her body. This ability becomes important during the climactic fight on Exegol. Rey holds Luke's lightsaber overhead to end Palpatine for good, but while connected to now Ben, she is able to pass it off to him so he could fight off the Knights of Ren. Just pass it off like a freaking baton. Another facet of Rey and Ben's force bond is what we'll call flash fighting. When their force face times were introduced in The Last Jedi, Rey and Kylo could only hear and see just the other person. In The Rise of Skywalker, their calls have been upgraded to show their settings and other background items. We then see the two lightsaber fight from two different places and see their locations blend together. <music> Lastly, force ghosts can use the force? Yes, they can. Luke appears to Rey on Acto as she burns Kylo's TIE fighter and encourages her to continue fighting on. The only problem is now she doesn't have a ride off the island. Solution? Luke raises his X-Wing from the murky depths of the waters and sends Rey on her way. Looks pretty easy for the dude considering he couldn't pull that off while training on Dagobah. Maybe Luke learned that he could use his force powers from Force Ghost Yoda who set that tree on fire in The Last Jedi. Well, which was your favorite of the new Force powers introduced in The Rise of Skywalker? Let us know in the comments. And for more Star Wars, check out our review of The Rise of Skywalker and our video explaining the ending. And as always, be sure to follow and subscribe wherever you like to watch IGN.